How's it going everyone? Hope you're ready for another adventure because today Wayne continues with the one and only Ivan by Catherine Applegate. Remember that as we go along with the book just press the CC button to be able to follow along. I wonder who's going to join us today? Well, it's Mr. Moon. Normally Ivan's been able to join us but he must be busy. So Mr. Moon is going to come take his place. Are you ready to read this book, Mr. Moon? I think this is your first time joining us. Perfect. Let's jump in. Sorry. I'm sorry I called those children slimy chimps. My mother would be ashamed of me. Good way to start. Julia. Like the spit pebble children, Julia is a child. But that, after all, is not her fault. While her father George cleans the small each night, Julia sits by my domain. She could sit anywhere she wants. By the carousel, in the empty food court, the bleachers coated in sawdust. But I'm not bragging when I say she always chooses to sit by me. I think it's because we both love to draw. Sarah, Julia's mother, used to help clean the mall, but when she got sick and grew pale and stooped, Sarah stopped coming. Every night, Julia offers to help George, and every night he says firmly, Homework, Julia. The floors will get dirty again. Homework, I have discovered, involves a sharp pencil. and thick boots and long size. I enjoy chewing pencils. I'm sure I would excel at homework. Sometimes Julia dozes off and sometimes she reads her books, but mostly she draws pictures and talks about her day. I don't know why people talk to me, but they often do. Perhaps it's because they think I can't understand them. Or, perhaps, it's because I can't talk back. Julia likes science and art. She doesn't like Lilia Burpee, who teases her because her clothes are old. And she do does like Deshaun Williams, who teases her too, but in a nice way. She would like to be a famous artist when she grows up. Sometimes, Julia draws me. I'm an elegant fellow in her pictures with my long silver back gleaming like moon on moss. I never look angry, the way I do on the fading billboard by the highway. I always look a bit sad though. Drawing Bob. I love Julia's pictures of Bob. She draws him flying across the page, a blur of feet and fur. She draws him motionless, peeking out from behind trash can or the soft hill of my belly. Sometimes in her drawings, Julia gives Bob's wings or a lion's mane. Once she gave him a tortoise shell, but the best thing she ever gave him wasn't a drawing. Julia gave Bob his name. For a long time, no one knew what to call Bob. Now and then, a mall worker would try to approach him with a tidbit. Here, doggy, they'd call, holding out a french fry. Come on, pooch, they say. How about a piece of sandwich? But he will always vanish into the shadows before anyone could get close. One afternoon, Julia decided to draw a little dog curled up in the corner of my domain. First, she watched him for a long time, chewing on her thumbnail. I could tell she was looking at him the way an artist looks at the world when she's trying to understand him. Finally, she grabbed her pencil and set to work. When she finished, she held up the page. Under the picture, there were three bold, confident marks, circled in black. I was pretty certain it was a word, even though I couldn't read it. Julia's father peered over her shoulder. That's him exactly, he said, nodding. He pointed to the circle marks. I didn't realize his name was Bob, he said. Me either, said Julia as she smiled. I had to draw him first. Bob and Julia. Bob will not let humans touch him. 
He says their scent upsets his digestion. But every now and then, I see him sitting at Julia's feet. Her fingers move gently, just behind his right ear. Mac. Usually, Mac leaves after the last show, but tonight, he's in his office working late. When he's done, he stops by my domain and stares at me for a long time while he drinks from a brown bottle. George joins him, broom in hand, and Mac says the same thing he always says. How about that game last night? And business has been slow, but it'll get better, you'll see. And don't forget to empty the trash. Mac glances over at the picture Julia is drawing. What are you making, he asks. It's for my mom, says Julia. It's a flying dog. She holds up her drawing, eyeing it critically. She likes airplanes and dogs. Hmm, Mac murmurs, sounding unconvinced. He looks at George. How's the wife doing, anyway? About the same, George says. She has good days and bad days. Yeah, don't we all, Mac says. Mac starts to leave, then pauses. He reaches into his pocket, pulls out a crumpled green bill, and presses it into George's hand. Here, Mac says with a shrug. Buy the kids some more crayons. Mac is already out the door before George can yell, Thanks! Stella, I say after Julia and her father go home, I can't sleep. Of course you can't, she says. You are the king of sleepers. Shh. Bob says from his perch on my belly, I'm drinking of chili fries. I'm tired, I say, but I'm not sleepy. What are you tired of, Stella asks. I think for a while. It's hard to put in the words. Gorillas are not complainers. We're dreamers, poets, philosophers, and nap takers. I don't know exactly. I kick at the tire swing. I think I may be a little tired of my domain. That's because it's a cage, Bob tells me. Bob is not always tactful. I know, Stella says. It's a very small domain. And you're a very big gorilla, Bob adds. Stella, I ask. Yes? I noticed that you were limping more than usual today. Is your leg bothering you? Just a little, Stella answers. <sighs> I sigh. Bob resettles. His ears flick. He drools a bit, but I don't mind. I'm used to it. Try eating something, Stella says. That always makes you happy. I eat an old brown carrot. Doesn't help. But I don't tell Stella. She needs to sleep. You could try remembering a good day, Stella suggested. That's what I do when I can't sleep. Stella remembers every moment since she was born. Every scent, every sunset, every slight, and every victory. You know I can't remember much, I say. There's a difference, Stella says gently, between can't remember and won't remember. That's true, I admit. Not remembering can be difficult, but I've had a lot of time to work on it. Memories are precious, Stella adds. They help tell us who we are. Try remembering all your keepers. You always like Carl, the one with the harmonica. Carl, yes. I remember how he gave me a coconut when I was still a juvenile. It took me all day to open it. I try to recall other keepers I've known, the humans who cleaned my domain, prepared my food, and sometimes kept me company. There was Juan who poured Pepsi into my waiting mouth, and Katrina who used to poke me with a broom when I was sleeping, and Ellen who sang, how much is that monkey in the window? With a sad smile, she scrubbed my bowl. And there was Gerald, who once brought me a box of fat, sweet strawberries. Gerald was my favorite keeper. I haven't had a real keeper in a long time. Max says he doesn't have money to pay for an eight babysitter. These days, George cleans my cage and Mac is the one who feeds me. When I think about all the people who have taken care of me, mostly it's Mac, I recall. Day in and day out, 
year after year after year. Matt, who bought me and raised me, and says I'm no longer cute. As this a silverback could ever be cute. Moonlight falls on the frozen carousel, on the silent popcorn stand, on the stall of leather belts that smell like long gone cows. The heavy work of Stella's breathing sounds like the wind in the trees. I wait for sleep to find me. The beetle. Matt gives me a new black crayon and a fresh pile of paper. It's time to work again. I smell the crayon, roll it in my hands, press the sharp point against my paw. There's nothing I love more than a new crayon. I search my domain for something to draw. What is black? An old banana peel would work, but I haven't eaten them all. Not tag is brown. My little pool is blue. The yogurt raisin I'm saving for this afternoon is white. At least on the outside. Something moves in the corner. I have a visitor. A shiny beetle has stopped by. Bugs often wander through my domain on their way to somewhere else. Hello, beetle, I say. He freezes, silent. Bugs never want to chat. The beetle's an attractive bug with a body like glossy nut. He's black as a starless night. That's it. I'll draw him. It's hard making a picture of something new. I don't get the chance to do that often, but I try. I look at the beetle, who's being kind enough not to move, then back at my paper. I draw his body, his legs, his antenna, his sour expression. I'm lucky the beetle stays still all day. Usually bugs don't linger when they visit. I'm beginning to wonder if he's feeling all right. Bob, who's been known to munch on bugs from time to time, offers to eat him. I tell Bob that won't be necessary. I'm just finishing my last picture when Mac returns. George and Julia are with him. Mac enters my domain and picks up a drawing. What the heck is this, he asks. Beats me what Ivan thinks he's drawing. That's a picture of nothing, a big black nothing. Julia stands outside my domain. Can I see? She asks. Mac holds up my picture to the window. Julia tilts her head. She squeezes one eye shut. Then she opens her eye and scans my domain. I know, she exclaims. It's a beetle. See that beetle over there by Ivan's pool? Man, I sprayed this place for bug. Mac walks over to where the beetle is and lifts his foot. Before Mac can stop, the beetle skitters away, disappearing through a small crack. Mac turns back to my drawings. So you figure this is a beetle, huh? If you say so, kid. Oh, that's a ju beetle for sure, Julia says, smiling at me. I know a beetle when I see one. It's nice, I think, having a fellow artist around. Change. Stella is not the first to notice the change, but soon we all feel it. A new animal is coming to Big Top Mall. How do we know this? Because we listen, we watch, and most of all, we sniff the air. Humans always smell odd when change is in the air. Like rotten meat, a hint of papaya. Guessing. Bob fears our new neighbor could be a giant cat with slinted eyes and a coiled tail. But Stella says a truck will arrive this afternoon carrying a baby elephant. How do you know, I ask, a sample in the air. But all I smell is caramel corn. I love caramel corn. I can hear her, Stella says. She's crying for her mother. I listen. I hear cars charging past. I hear the snore of the sun bears in their wire domain. But I don't hear any elephants. You're just hoping, I says. Stella closes her eyes softly. Not hoping. Not at all. And that is a great place to end part three of the one and only Ivan.
thank you, Mr. Moon, for stopping by and enjoying this story with us. We'll see you on the next time. And we'll see you on the next time with Wayne Reeves. Hope you had fun on this adventure. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.